we've got to talk about another police incident. New information has been released that in 2020, there was a 73-year-old woman by the name of Karen Gardner who was arrested. And apparently this woman, we're going to learn more about her, has some mental disorders, some dementia and some other mental disabilities. And when police came upon her, they took her to the ground. You're going to see as we go through the body camera footage in this segment that they were rough with her. After she was arrested and brought into custody, then the officers reviewed the body camera footage and they were fist bumping each other. They were laughing at each other. They were pointing out that her shoulder popped when they sort of dislocated it. So these officers are yucking it up behind the scenes in their office. And this just leaked out or this was released. It wasn't even leaked. This was released by Miss Garner's attorneys who have now filed, of course, a lawsuit seeking monetary damages and compensation for the insanity that these officers put her through. So let's go through this story. We do have some body camera footage in here. So a little bit of a content warning if that is upsetting to you, but nobody dies in this. There's no blood. It is, you know, man being inhumane to other man, man's inhumanity to man, but we are going to go through it. So just a little bit of a heads up if some of that stuff is concerning. So let's take a quick look over here. We have new information, as I mentioned, was released. Officer Austin Hupp. Hop is the name. He comes from Loveland Police Department. He's the person who arrested 73-year-old Karen Garner. This happened in 2020, and he can be seen laughing with other officers in newly released footage as he reviews body camera video from her arrest. This arrest prompted a civil rights lawsuit against Loveland Police Department, which is in Colorado, and several of its employees. Garner's attorneys released the footage along with new information on Garner's detention at the Loveland police station immediately after her arrest. With the new information also came an amended complaint, which adds officer Tyler Blackett and Sergeant Antelina Hill to the lawsuit. So we've got some bad popo here. We've got Austin Hupp. We've got Tyler Blackett and Sergeant Antelina Hill, at least suspected to be bad popo. We don't, we don't know yet. Loveland police officials have declined to comment on the incident, of course, and new information as the investigation into the arrest proceeds, saying they trust, quote, let's listen to this. They trust the due process. Hmm. So that's nice. So they trust due process when they're being investigated. But if you're a 73 year old woman, they just kind of pop your shoulder right out of your uh, socket, throw you in jail and then go back and laugh about it in their police department. Got it. According to a press release from Sarah Schelke, the attorney representing Karen Gardner, in her lawsuit against the police, several officers over her arrest, this happened back on June 26, 2020, several officers can be seen laughing while reviewing the body camera video. Gardner's family hired a sound engineer to enhance the audio in the booking area videos. Okay, so most of this, you can't even hear it ordinarily because these guys are quiet, right? They're not saying, hey, look, we just arrested a 73-year-old, you know, whatever, and kind of under the radar. Hey, check, did you see that? Can you believe that happened? Fist bump, right? Here it is. Let's take a quick listen in. This is them fist bumping. We're going to get to the, the clip here in a second. You can see these two officers here booking photograph from within the jail. We're going to see, we're going to piece all this together here in a minute, but you can see here a little, little bit of a love tap. Hey, that's fun. How exciting was that? We're police officers. <laughs> God, it irritates me. According to the release, city officials have yet to send any apology to the gardener or her family. After the lawsuit was filed, Hop was placed on administrative leave. Assisting officer Jalali and supervising sergeant Phil Metzler were moved to administrative duties. Two days after the lawsuit and video from the arrest went public, police chief Bob Tyser spoke publicly about Gardner's arrest, saying, he wanted the investigation into the incident to be as transparent as possible. In newly released surveillance video footage, that Shelke, the attorney, posted to the Life and Liberty Law Office YouTube page, which I linked down in the description below. So make sure you go give them a check and a nice sub and a nice follow because they deserve it. Hop can be seen laughing with other LPD officers when watching his body camera footage from the arrest of the 80 pound, five foot tall woman who reportedly suffers from dementia. He can be seen early on fist bumping Jalali over the arrest. And we saw that right here, right? So that's hop here and that's Jalali over there. The 14 minute compilation video, full video is linked below, 
includes video footage of the booking area where LPD officers worked and where Garner was being held. The full-long, hour-long surveillance video is also on their channel. Early in the video, Blackett can be heard asking Hop if Hop read Garner her Miranda rights when arresting her. Nope, he responds, I did not. Later in the release footage, officers are seen watching Hop's body camera laughing as Hop watches. He can be heard laughing and he celebrates with Jalali and Blackett. In the video, Jalali can be heard saying that body cams are my favorite thing to watch. <clears throat> Just minutes later, she can be seen pulling her hat down over her face saying, I hate this. This is great, Hop responds. Ready for the pop? Hear the pop? Hop can be heard saying about the apparent dislocation of Garner's shoulder. According to the release, Garner was handcuffed to the bench just 10 feet away from them at the time. Okay, one more time. Says, ready for the pop? Hear the pop? From a police officer with another police officer. Fist bumping each other. Pop. Pop. Hear the pop? Horrific statement comes to light after Garner's family hired a sound engineer to enhance the audio on Loveland Police Station booking videos from the day of her arrest. The release said, it's not only a grotesque revelation to come from these booking station videos. According to the release, during the first hour Garner was in custody, she could be heard saying that they hurt my shoulders 22 times. They hurt my wrists 13 times. They kept hurting eight times and it hurts eight times. Garner was allegedly not giving any medical treatment while at the Loveland Police Station. They the release also included several new allegations against the department and its members. It says that a blue team report was filed for Garner's arrest, a system that alerts the department to create an official record whenever force is used. Tyser, who I think is the police chief, said, all right, they're going to use the system, uh, information about industry. Great, got all that. Tyser said department officials did not learn about the injuries until the lawsuit was filed. <laughs> okay, that's great. Until information was posted online. Okay, so, all right, maybe that's true. Maybe the attorneys didn't send anything over there. I can't imagine they did. You know, typically the way that these things work is you file what's called a notice of claim with the city. Bef uh, so I'm not sure if he's talking about that or he's talking about the direct lawsuit. Who knows? Well, regardless, Blue Team has it, according to the booking area photos. The new release also alleges that Metzler, the supervisor on the scene when Gardner was arrested, knew she was injured and authorized that she be kept in a cell without medical evaluation or treatment. Even coming through to check on the status of the report writing and knowing Garner was still locked away and injured just mere feet away. Hill, another supervising officer who had been added to the complaint, allegedly came through the booking area while Gardner was being held and personally reviewed Hop's affidavit describing his use of force. Allegedly notarized it, laughed, and then, quote, joined in on the jokes that were being made regarding Miss Garner's age and small size or injuries and the fact that the hobble, hogtie used on her, got her blood on it and so would need to be washed, according to the press release. On a 73-year-old woman, right? This is, this is grandma that has dementia. Cops bust her shoulder, pop it out of the socket, hogtie her. She's bleeding on herself. Take her back to the station, throw her in the cell, know that she's injured, laugh about it, fist bump each other, check on her report. Hey, is a report being written? And then laughing about it with each other. As she's in pain, in the other room, crying, neck, back, wrists, everything. I'm 73, you guys just beat the hell out of me. Let's take a look at what happened. Here's the body camera. on siren stop you just left walmart do you need to be arrested right now no 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 okay let's stop come on come on i'm going no 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 on the ground stay on the ground on the ground
Yeah, so you know, you, you watch that, it kind of makes your heart sink a little bit. Still makes mine sink because that's a that's a you know that's a that's a seventy three year old woman, woman with dementia who's eighty pounds. Obvious, right? Not a well person, and they just picked her up, kind of threw her in there like a piece of of cattle, which is disgusting and sick. Now. Even I, somebody who's seen a lot of this stuff, can watch something like this and go, that, that makes my stomach churn a little bit because of my compassion, I think, for fellow man. And when I see other people doing stuff like this to other people with almost no sense of humanity and just clearly cold, mechanical, and calculating, it really is grotesque. Now, that being said, this happens all the time in this country. This is not a new thing. This is pretty, uh, pretty disturbing because this happened to a 73-year-old woman, but this happens all the time, right? If you're, if you're a 26-year-old person in the middle of a mental health crisis, doesn't matter what color you are, this, this happens across the board. This, this is white, these are white cops doing this to a white woman. I know people want to make all of these police incidents about race. I don't really think so. I think it's a cultural thing. I think that it's a big problem with law enforcement and how they think they are supposed to act when they're dealing with civilians. These people, I, I, I feel like they're operating like they're in the middle of Fallujah, right? Like they're para-dropping into, you know, uh, Baghdad or something like that when they're out dealing with a $13 theft from Walmart. They got to, you know, they got to rough this woman up and then laugh about it when they go back into the station. Very, very grotesque. Unfortunately, all too common. And as we now know, almost zero accountability in the police department, at least if you want to take the facts on the merits. If you want to take the uh, facts that were alleged in the lawsuit on the face for face value, they're saying, well, nobody even knew about it, right? We, we had this woman who was injured. Several people sign off on the use of force document. Chief of police now comes out, says, well, I want to be transparent about it. But apparently they didn't even know about it until the lawsuit was filed. So now we're talking about checks and balances and internal procedures. When there has been a use of force, what are the police doing in order to vet what happened, make sure that nothing happened that was problematic? until the defense sues, until somebody sues about this. Now all of these cops are going to just, what are they going to do? They're going to respond. They're going to say, no, qualified immunity, right? She was arrested. She was lawfully arrested. Everything that they did there, I think, was legally act, was, was, was okay, right? She was a, apparently a suspect in a shoplifting, $13, resisted arrest technically, right? There's a, there's, the, the cops can go through this and justify everything that they did, but guess what? It was still wrong. And are there going to be repercussions for it? We'll find out. Here is a little bit more video about what happened back in the police station. This is a little note there at the bottom says, notice this video has been edited. The complete uncut video is over on their channel. Video says they're whispering to each other. Fist bump just happened. How do you think it went? Yeah, you should be.
All right. So as you saw, right, kind of yucking it up. Now, it does sound like they're talking about like kind of glory stories. You know, hey, maybe it was her first arrest or their second arrest. You know, I don't know what Loveland looks like. I don't know how much action they get. But apparently this was something that was sort of exciting for them. They were talking about it in that manner. Like, hey, how, how did you do? How did you do? How did you think I did? Well, I thought you did fine. Well, I don't know. You know, I don't want you to think that I wasn't participating is what the female officer said. She said, well, you know, I didn't want you to think that I was sort of backing away. He said, no, you did great. You know, you, you helped her. Uh, we, it, it was, she, she was a fighter. She was squirmy. She was flexible. Did you hear the pop though? I was like, oh no, you know, kind of like this whole thing was, was just, you know, commentary. Then he starts to wise up a little bit. You, you can see him kind of pause when they go, did you see she was born in 46, 73? He goes, oh, it's like my grandma. So yeah, not ideal. A little bit concerned that maybe she's senile. Maybe she's got dementia. Maybe something is going to come of this, obviously. So why is this stuff common parlance? Why do they all act like this? Why do they go back, sit at their desks, write their reports, and yuck it up over this stuff? And I understand, right? I understand, you know, like if you're a waiter or something, right? Oh, it's crazy out there. That customer was a loser or whatever. Customer's a jerk, right? Attorneys do it. Doctors do it. Everybody has sort of that gallows humor to some degree. But this was a 73-year-old woman, and they just broke her shoulder, popped it out of socket. And they're just, where, what, what makes humanity evaporate from a person that you can do that to somebody else? How, how does that work? Over $13 in a Walmart shoplifting situation. It's disgusting. Here's some more. Uh, here's a scene. It says, Sergeant Metzler is the officer's supervisor. He was on scene with them. He knows that Karen is injured. Then Sergeant Metzler is the officer's supervisor. Okay, so what's going on here? Let's see. A little bloody, a little muddy, that's all right. Yeah, is the blood on her? Yeah, yeah that's her blood. So, right, it, it sounds like these are two kind of high school kids, graduates, just go, you know, talking about it, still sort of pumped up by the adrenaline of an arrest. Maybe it was their first arrest. Maybe they're 20-something years old. I don't know. Let's see what else we've got.
See what happened there? Does she need to be charged with a felony? See how that happens? Just a couple, couple, couple cops poking around. Oh, maybe, maybe we will charge her with a felony. Maybe that's justified. We've got more clips. We're going to skip through them. Let's take a look at some questions over from watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Gross behavior. Let's see what else we've got, Miss Faith. Do we have some other questions? My PowerPoints are not updating. We're having another technical problem here today, so we're trying to sort through that. Doesn't look like I have any questions queued up on this one. So we'll just hang on. She's sending me another link. Our, all right, so now it's updated. All right, we've got some questions. Says, first and foremost, we have Nadar Blasir says, this really infuriates me, especially when DC... Uh, all right, so... Not sure what's going on over here. Let's take a look here. First question's up from Joe Snow says, Robert, most cops are absolutely disgusting people. Is that a fair assessment? I actually don't think it's fair. I think that most cops are not disgusting people. I think that most cops are good people. Most cops are like the rest of us. Most cops are uh, just like you and I, right? They're sort of living li their lives. They want to start families and they want to do some good in the world. And I think that is the vast majority of officers. I think they are part of a culture that has a lot of problems that protect some of the bad officers that are there. And unfortunately, the difference between maybe the police industry and our industry are that they have a total monopoly on power. They have a lot of protections that you or I do not have, right? If you're, uh, if you sell a widget and your widget kills somebody, well, you get sued or you go to jail for that and you're out of business, it's over. Police, there's no skin in the game in that regard. They have a contract with the government to do whatever they want, and they have a lot of power when executing those those governments, uh, those contracts with our governments, and that results in some very, very strong protections for some of the less favorable aspects of their uh, their their force. That is the problem. And so what we see, in my opinion, is we see sort of a higher concentration of really bad officers. And when those officers do something bad, it's catastrophic, right? If you, if you are a bad cashier selling hot dogs at a vending machine, well, and you, and you screw that up, it's not the end of the world. If you're a police officer and you do something bad, well, you end up with a city burning down because some, you know, some, something happened in a, in a way that society doesn't like. Consequences are very dramatic. And I think that's why law enforcement, uh, you know, the, the, the bad ones really stand out. The good ones, not so much. And part of the problem with that, I think, is that a lot of the good officers, they don't necessarily call out some of the other bad ones. So you don't get to see those who stand out often. We have Liberty or Death says, I'm shocked that Ben Crump did not jump to represent Garner. I know that's weird. I wonder why. I wonder why that is. Crump's on a lot of other cases. Where is he at with Gardner? We've got HLB says, how are events like this not immediately handled with swift firing? Like we can train people who actually want to be there for people. Uh, if my granny or grandma had to handle this, I need a prosthetic because my foot would be so far up their ass. I said it. I said it because it deserved it. Let's take a look. We got Sherry Quidney in the house says, are these humans? What is wrong with them? Calling any... Calling them any kind of animal pig comes to mind is an insult to the animals. Yeah, I mean, at least animals are, most of them are pretty nice to each other. Next up, we've got Leroy TMD says, why do cops think every interaction needs to get physical and end in an arrest? What's the punishment for stealing $20 worth of crap from Walmart? Community service, can we just not issue a citation and move along? Reminds me of the Eric Garner death. He was just selling cigarettes illegally on the corner, right? Well, you saw that cop, right? He, he gave her about two seconds to comply. Soon as she didn't comply, boom, it's it, right? Physical right there. He didn't try to go in front of her and say, ma'am, can you even understand what I'm saying right now? I'm trying to communicate with you. I need you to stop. There's a, there's an altercation at Walmart. Apparently you left with some money. I'm trying to figure this out. Please don't walk away from me. Oh, you, you see that she doesn't understand what you're saying. You see that she has like a, a, a glaze. She's looking through your body because she doesn't know what's going on because she has dementia. 
maybe that's uh, okay. Well, we're, we're dealing with somebody who's not mentally well, right? That could, that would have taken 30 seconds. He didn't, he just said, all right, that's, oh, you're walking away from me. You're disobeying my authority. That's a lawful authority. Uh, and I'm out here. I need an adrenaline hit. So he got it on the back of a 73 year old woman. It's that guy for you. We have leafy bug in the house says at that age, there's a good chance this poor woman will never physically recover from those injuries. I don't even want to think about the psychological damage. Yeah. And what if this woman dies, right? What if she does, right? You, 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 hear, you hear kind of that joke. It's kind of a bad joke. But, you know, as soon as an old person breaks their hip, that's kind of the end of the road. Like, that's the end of the line for them, right? They're not going to be walking. They're not going to be mobile. They're going to have a bunch of surgeries. It's all downhill from there. Well, the government just did this to this woman. 73 year old woman who, you know, in my opinion, never that, that she was, she was not a threat. She was walking away. He gave her about half of a second to comply before he engaged her. And I think that that was inappropriate. Hopefully he gets, pays the, the repercussions for that. HLB says, so is there no training for handling psychological issues and de-escalation for those scenarios? I know toddlers who could have handled the situation better. Yeah, there, there is training for that. Of course. I mean, they go through a lot of training. They just, they're sort of ready for that adrenaline hit. They want to get out there and mix it up with people. That's why they became officers. Jack Elias says the only thing a cop will not laugh about is our child molesters and cop killers. Everything else is fair game and will always be fair game. Once an officer pulls the body of a child out of a dumpster. Yeah, not good. Not good. Uh, last question up from Sasha Sisha says, hi, Rob, Ms. Fechoy and Ma. Hope y'all are doing well. That video was sad. Excessive force. For no reason. They seem so heartless. And it makes you think that if this happened to their elderly loved ones, how would they react to it? Very good question. Very good question indeed. And let's take a quick look at, let's see if we've got any other questions in here. Not looking like we do. Now, Miss Faith is telling me to check something. One second over here. So it's not that. Because I still don't see you, Miss Faith. All right, no problem. We're going to move on to the next segment because we've got to get out of here in about 22 minutes. So let's move on through it.